Have you ever felt this stinging, burning, or scratchy sensation in your eyes? If you do, then you may have dry eye syndrome. Dry eye syndrome affects about 20% of the U.S. population, and the condition is often ignored. In other words, the percentage of individuals experiencing dry eye symptoms is much larger. Also, dry eyes is actually much more complicated than most people think it is. In today's video, I will help you better understand the cause of your own dry eye and how you and your ophthalmologist can work together to bring about the most satisfactory treatments. Let's take a look. Hi everyone, welcome to my channel. Glad to have another opportunity to chat with all of you. This channel dedicates to educating my community on different eye care topics and share some cool facts about the eye. If you would like to catch on my future videos, consider hitting the subscribe button below. You can also recommend this channel to the people around you if you find it helpful. This video is a part of the Complete Dry Eye series, and in my previous video, we discussed the basic structure of tear film and the lacrimal apparatus. If you haven't watched the first video, please watch it before continuing because you will need it to understand dry eye syndrome. Dry eyes might not sound bad, but I am telling you that once they get to those advanced stages, it's pretty bad. Severe forms of dry eyes can lead to excruciating pain that is nearly intolerable. In extreme cases, corneal ulcers or perforations can happen alongside infections or even scarring can develop on the cornea and lead to hazy and blurry vision. So, never ignore dry eyes and take them seriously. Let's have a rapid revision on the contents of tear film. So, tears are not just water. The tear film is divided into three layers. First, you get the lipid layer secreted by meibomian glands that prevent tears from evaporating. Then you get the middle aqueous layer. The aqueous layer is mostly of water and secreted by the accessory and main lacrimal gland. I would like to point out that though the aqueous layer is 98% water, it also contains other proteins and electrolytes such as sodium ions, potassium ions, and chloride ions. This information is essential because changes in the salt content are an indicator of dry syndrome. Lastly, you get the bottommost mucus layer secreted by the capillary cells on the conjunctiva. The mucus layer provides a hydrophilic template on which the tear film can bind to the eye surface. Keep in mind that each layer has its unique functions, and any change in the three-layer tear film equilibrium can damage and cause dry eyes. There is no uniform classification of dry eyes, but generally, dry eyes can be classified into three main categories. The first one is the aqueous deficient from dry eye. This is when your eye does not sufficiently produce the liquid component of your tear film. Pretty instinctive. Or you have the evaporative from dry eye. Evaporative dry eye is the most common type of dry eye that affects 60 to 70% of dry eye patients. This is when your lacrimal gland is producing enough liquid, but tears are evaporating from the surface of the eye too quickly, faster than you can produce them. You can also have the mix from a dry eye, and that is when you have trouble making liquid and your tears are evaporating too quickly. To simplify the process, I will talk about each category separately. Let's first discuss the common causes of aqueous deficient dry eye. The first one will be female sex. For people over 55 years of age, 8.1% of women, while only 3.5% of men, have dry eyes. Around 16 million adults 11 million women and 5 million men have dry eyes in the US. Interestingly enough, postmenopausal women taking hormone replacement therapy have even worse dry eyes. Women produce more estrogen than men, and in hormone replacement therapy, estrogen can upregulate the immune response, especially in the oil glands and the lacrimal glands, which leads to a decrease in function of the lacrimal gland. Men, on the other hand, produce less estrogen and more androgen. Androgen down-regulate the immune response, especially in lacrimal glands and the meibomian glands that are lymphocyte rich. In fact, when scientists experiment with animal models, the animals that are purposefully depleted of androgen develop dry eyes. The second cause of aqueous deficient dry eye is corneal nerve desensitivity. Nerves in the cornea are supposed to detect dryness on the surface of the eye. The brain will, in turn, signal the lacrimal gland to secrete more tears. Unfortunately, if you have ever had an eye trauma, infection, 
or your refractive eye surgery such as LASIK, then during this process, the nerves on the surface of your cornea can get damaged and severed. Damaged nerves do not regenerate fully and become less responsive to the dryness of your eye, and hence your lacrimal glands produce fewer tears due to the lack of signaling. Another cause of aqueous deficiency are certain medications such as antihistamines, decongestants, hormone replacement therapy, antidepressants, and drugs for high blood pressure, acne, birth control, and Parkinson's disease. These drugs are known to dry out the body, causing you to urinate more and become dehydrated so that you just run out of fluid to produce tears. If you are taking these medications, make sure you hydrate yourself to avoid dry eyes. Last but not least, autoimmune disorders, certain medical conditions including Sjogren's syndrome, allergic eye disease, rheumatoid arthritis, and lupus can lead to dry eyes. The most notable one is Sjogren's syndrome. In Sjogren's syndrome, the immune system mistakenly attacks your lacrimal gland and impairs its ability to secrete tears. In fact, autoimmune disorders as a risk factor of the dry eye further explain why women are at the risk of dry eye. Women, on average, are twice as likely to have autoimmune disorders as men. Women have two pairs of X chromosomes, while the X chromosome has many genes relating to the immune system. The larger number of genes originating from the X chromosome, because women have two while men have one, creates a far greater possibility of a more significant number of mutations occurring, putting women at a greater risk for developing autoimmune diseases. Alright, so these are the most common causes of aqueous deficiency dry eye. I just realized that I've seriously underestimated how complicated dry eye syndrome is. Today we have discussed the aqueous deficient form of dry eye, and we will go through the evaporative form in our next video. Before we end this video, let's go through why dry eyes lead to burning sensation in the eye and blur vision. In moderate to severe form of dry eyes, the corneal epithelial cells on the cornea surface start to lift off. Due to dryness. Once the cell lifts off, you get microcorneal abrasions. The cornea is the most sensitive tissue in the body, with a nerve density of 300 to 600 times than that of the skin, depending on its center or periphery. Hence, even micro damage to the cornea can lead to sharp pain. Finally, why does dry eye cause blur vision? So, before I answer this question, you have to know what is higher order aberrations. High order aberrations are the more subtle and complex form of refractive errors than nearsightedness and regular astigmatism acquired by a radiation of light when it passes through an eye with irregularities of its refractive components. While lower order aberrations such as nearsightedness affect your visual acuity, higher order aberrations affect the visual quality. When your eyes are dry, tiny bridges begin to form on a tear film. Besides nourishing and protecting the eye surface, the tear film also helps to bend and refract light. Once there are breaks and holes in the tear film, the eye surface becomes bumpy and uneven. When light refracts on the rough surface, it gets scattered and distorted and leads to double vision. In other words, dry eyes temporarily raises the amount of high order aberration of your eye, but don't worry. Once you get your eyes lubricated, your vision should return to normal. Alright everyone, thank you so much for watching and for your interest in ophthalmology. If you like this video, consider hitting the like button below. And don't forget to check out my other videos. I'm heading off to lunch now, and see you next time.